Life's a game, the world's a stage, and we are merely role players, where theatrical people play role playing games. Hi, I'm Matt Boothman, and I'm your compare for this studio production. Here on Merely Role Players, what we do is we improvise stories to entertain you and sort of to entertain ourselves. And we use role playing games to keep those stories going places even we can't see coming. Because as theatrical people, we're all about maximising the drama. This episode is Act 1 of The Queen's Dead, one of our studio productions. The studio is where we experiment with different formats, different role-playing games, and different genres of story. In this production, we're playing at Hammer Horror High Court Politics, using the beta version of Court of the Lich Queen by Ursidice. You don't need to be caught up on anything else we've produced before to jump into The Queen's Dead. In fact, all our productions tell a complete story. So if you enjoy this one and you want to try something else we've done, just find any episode with Act 1 in the title and you'll be good to jump in there. Starting now, we'll release a new act of The Queen's Dead every other week. And to keep you going through the weeks in between, we'll release backstage episodes that give you a peek behind the scenes. So stay tuned for one of those next week. In the meantime, please take your seats in the studio. Tonight's production is about to begin. Please welcome to the stage the cast of this studio production and its oops all guest players uh, for Court of the Lich Queen. (laughs) Let's start with uh, a voice that you may have heard before on Millie Role Players. All right. Hello, my name is Fiona. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the host of What Am I Rolling, a podcast uh, that does RPGs and different one shots and different systems. I'm also the co host of the DM's Book Club and the GM's Book Club, which is coming out very, very soon. But tonight I am playing various representatives of the skeletal duchy in this wonderful court of the Lich Queen. And joining us on Merely Role Players for the very first time, making her Merely Role Players stage debut. Please welcome to the stage, Naomi. Yeah, I walk on stage, trip immediately over my own dress, and just like <laughs> face into the boards to set the stage for how today's going to go. <laughs> you know, uh, I am playing the Draugr realm, the Draugr earldom, uh, and I am Naomi Clark, and you can find my horror scripted show, The Secret of St. Kilda, and you can also see me playing more RPGs on Realms of Peril and Glory and Who Lives Who Dice, because I get around. Mm-hmm. Welcome, both of you, and thank you very much for joining for this game of Court of the Lich Queen by Ursa Dice. We are today playing the beta test rules of Court of the Lich Queen by Ursa Dice, and we're doing... <sighs> What might be better described as not so much a play test as a crash test. Perfect. An exhibition. <laughs> yes. Yeah, showcase. Uh, a showcase match, uh, throwdown, uh, because there are rules in this game for a version that lasts 
13 in-game years or a version that lasts seven in-game years. We today will be playing a version that lasts a single in-game year. (laughs) Also, this is a game for four to six players. And if you've been paying attention, you'll notice there are three of us. (laughs) So... We will be playing, you know, the rules as written, but with some modifications and be aware that this is not the final release of the game. And also we are taking significant liberties with Ursa Dice's great design work. And and also it's us. So <laughs> <laughs> so expect only the best. Yeah, I'm setting expectations of like amazing role play, little rules uh, and great conversations. So... Uh... <laughs> Well, without further ado, shall we take the stage and raise the curtain on this game? Yes, let's do it. Death reigns supreme in these lands. Love her. (laughs) (laughs) But perhaps not for much longer. The Lich Queen long ago chained her own corpse to the ending throne to assure the supremacy of death for all eternity. And yet, if the prophecy is to be believed, at the end of this very year, the dawn will come and the realms of death will crumble. We of the Realms of Death have been feeling the coming of the dawn for several years up to this point. The crumbling, if we're honest, has begun. It is visible. Bastions of our various realms have been falling. It feels a bit, it's a bit bit of a recession really, you know. Mm -hmm. Not enough jobs for corpses anymore. Um, Closed shop fronts. Mm -hmm. uh, Businesses going out. And you know, there was a period of denial where we're saying, no, no, this is just a trough. It'll peak back up again. <laughs> it's the natural cycle of boom and bust. Except it's now bust and bust. <laughs> like... Yeah, we keep troughing. It has become <laughs> abundantly clear that the dawn is imminent. Mm. But the Lich Queen's undead court continues to meet three times a year to plan their response to the coming of the dawn. Representatives meet and a robust exchange of ideas takes place as the representatives bring news of what what is occurring in their realm and band together to complete rituals to stave off the coming of the dreaded dawn. As the new year begins, The black lips of the Lich Queen part, and she utters a line of prophecy. Could I ask each of you, please, to roll a d6? (laughs) Uh, Absolutely. Three. One. A three and a one. The black lips of the Lich Queen part, and she utters... From out their subtle graves ascending... Those adorned with rust are screaming. Hot. It's now up to us as representatives of the Lich Queen's court to interpret this line of the prophecy and work out what she's trying to tell us about which resources are going to be required for this year's ritual to stave off the dawn. And the potential resources are blood, bone, earth, flesh, ice, iron and silver. It definitely feels... It, anything that comes from below the earth is not good, and I say that as a skeleton. Um, <laughs> so I think more... The Draugr representative need... is taking that very personally. Just but, but, well, I, oh, I speak for myself. <laughs> I'm sorry that you were offended. <laughs> um, I, but I think earth will probably be quite a, a key thing here. So just, you know, put as much space between us and them, whatever them is. I think uh, that things grow from the earth, and fuck that. Um, no growing, only dying. So uh, I'm going to suggest that it's it's actually flesh. I know that you wouldn't understand skeletons being the fleshless ones, yes. and also ghosts being the fleshless ones. But those of us with flesh understand. This comes back to that bloody flesh wall, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, we came up the flesh wall now. Oh, flesh, flesh, flesh. <laughs> Listen, you were really into the flesh wall, like when it saved your entire kingdom. And it, maybe you it was just a one-off, a one-off thing. 
Just always lording it over us that you're the only ones with any flesh left. Listen, you can be jealous, you can be envious, but you cannot deny the truth. Flesh good. Dirt also good. (laughs) Iron, though, we can agree on iron at least. Iron. Yes, it makes sense, I guess, with the rust. Those adorned with rust. Mm. Yes. I think so. Perhaps bone, then? Iron and bone? Or... Oh, you're always thinking about bone. I'm just offering. We can agree on iron, but what is this other one? Is it flesh, earth, or bone? It's bone. Flesh, oh, no. earth, or... Oh. Flesh, 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 flesh. <sighs> How can we how can we hope to complete the ritual together if we can't even agree what is needed? You know what? You know what? I will concede. Let us go for flesh. You'd think we'd all be better at interpreting the Lich Queen's words after so many, many years. Ah, uh, excuse me, I did a great job. So flesh, flesh and iron are required yes. for this year's ritual. It is recorded. It is recorded in the deep. And so it is done. In the deep lore songs of the Wraithlight Dominion. No, oh, it's on a CD, isn't it? Oh. In the gift shop. Bloody iPod Nano selling. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a backbeat that's just like, iron, 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 flesh, iron, flesh, iron, flesh, iron, flesh, iron, flesh, iron, iron, flesh, iron, Look, I know, I know physical media isn't fashionable, but it's, it lasts. You've got to own your recordings. Yes, own that's the fine, but, songs. Um, we put ours on vinyl, so like, you just see one one skeleton with tape coming out of their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and a magnet on the side yeah. of the head. <laughs> and with this back channel prophecy interpretation session complete, mm-hmm. the waxing court of the final year of the court of the Lich Queen commences. At the feet of the ending throne to which the Lich Queen's corpse is chained, there is a council chamber. Would anybody like to add any details to what the council chamber is like? Have you seen Moon Knight? Oh, yes. Because I think that square, like, inset mm. is very, it's a very sexy oh, very cool, version yeah. of a court because then you have to look up at the Lich Queen. It has a little bit of a we're in the fighting pit vibe yeah, for sure. with each Absolutely. other. And obviously we have like we have each have our own seats around the edge. Yeah. But mm-hmm. if you but if you're gonna get down and dirty, you've got to get in the pit. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. If you're gonna address the whole court, you gotta get yeah. you gotta oh, get down there. The I middle. feel like it's like a black marble or like obsidian. Yeah. Um, yeah. with like uh like there's like ritual channels mm-hmm. full of Whatever you like. Icker or something. Icker, yeah. yeah. Maybe there's like um, a spotlight that comes on when you stand there, but obviously it it's done by an intern. <laughs> so every so often it might flicker or it might go to techno beat by accident because it's fiddling with the controls. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you always, when you're addressing the court and stuff, the spotlight will light you as you come down from your throne and, and then follow you back up. I think by the doors there's, there's two automaton guys with, with big timpani. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And the whole place is crumbling as well. So, like, as well as the uh, the official channels that the i moves through, there are just enormous cracks and chasms. i is that by Apple? <laughs> <laughs> I-Core, i I've never been sure. Uh, <laughs> let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but as well as those, you know, f- properly carved channels, there are also just great chasms crazing through the entire place it's very easy for the the minor functionaries to just fall down a great big chasm in the middle of a session idiots <laughs> well that's what happened to the last like was it four to six people are supposed to be in this game the, the other three people <laughs> there are other thrones around but we don't talk about them and we don't oh, look yeah, at them yeah. <laughs> i like to think also that like it's it's very dusty and so there's like the bits where people walk is like clean yeah, and then mm-hmm. round the edge paths. is just like yeah, yeah, yeah. And as the spotlight flickers on, and the waxing court of the final year commences, the representative of the Wraithlight Dominion enters the court chamber, borne by legless floating spirits. <laughs> oh, they're well drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
born aloft in a wooden barrel of of their own tears. Oh wow. Mm. The archgeist, the spirit Lacramine. Visible just brimming at the top of the barrel is the top of a head. Lank, long, dark curtains of black hair as this weeping spirit is born in to represent the Wraithlight Dominion. Wow. There's an intern putting out those little yellow signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cleaning it up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the barrel bearers are not what they once were, and they do not keep it level. There is a lot of slippage and spillage oh, no. uh, as, as the barrel is placed on the Wraithlight Dominion's throne. Exceedingly good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the the chamber is filled with the echoing sounds of sniffling and weeping. Uh, I would like to hear the sniffling and weeping, please. <laughs> oh, this is very good. That's There's my like favorite track on their, deb- on their debut album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a clattering of timpani as Creoc. The rotting hand of the cataclysm shuffles in. Uh, he walks by himself, but his body is long rotted, and there is just sort of burnt and charred skin with black swirling tattoos on across his face and shoulder as the uh, robes uh, are rotting off him as he moves with one shoulder drooped and pushing the other one in what looks like a feat of great effort. He basically comes in with a way that says, I'm already mad. That's his whole his whole vibe is I'm already pissed. Uh, he sees himself as sort of a down-to-earth version of a, you know, he's a man of the people, but the people are stupid. And also, I hate you. That's his whole thing. <laughs> and so he has a set of drummer Draugr who are limping and sloughing after him as he takes his place upon the throne of the Draga Eldom. With that attitude, I'm interested to know, is was he elected by a popular body or or did he just Oh it's 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 fight to the death, but we're already dead. Oh yeah. So it's right. a it's a large combat trial. There's a guy called Wolf and he does the rings <laughs> and you have to climb up a thing quicker. And then it says Gladiators ready <laughs> Um and that's how we decide every single disagreement is a round of gladiators. There's a lot of big boffer pits and, and foam weapons. The final uh, thing is just an upward hill of constantly... <laughs> it's a travelator, yeah. yeah. It's a travelator, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so after these two, obviously very impressive, very sort of show of strength members of the court come in, the timpani stops, the light sort of shines on where uh, the skeletal duchy would come in. And there is a moment... <laughs> where a rather short skeleton sort of shuffles in, just sort of looks around and goes, my turn? Okay. And then just walks without celebration or without sort of this sort of um, concophony of noises. It's just, you can, all you can hear is the sort of uh, click clack and creaking of their bones as they sort of shuffle forward. And this is uh, Fenex, the angular and the mottled. They're taking care not to slip in the pool of tears. Uh, they're taking care uh, not to fall down the various uh, chasms uh, and then just sort of do a slight bow to both of their other court members and then go and sit in their own throne, which they did not design. It was some sort of other forebearer stuff because it is a throne made out of bones and they find it quite distasteful. Um, <laughs> so Existential dread. Am I made of throne so, or is the throne made of bones? <laughs> exactly. Like, am I the throne? Um, so yeah, so they sit down. We like it. We thought that was your whole thing. No, no, it's fine. I appreciate the effort, you know, and they sort of sit down like, most of the time, their hands are templed horribly. Um, and maybe so often, maybe they, it, the only time you see them really cross or angry is when they t- temple them too much and they, there's a big crack as their fingers sort of all go out of joint and then they oh. quickly put it back together. Lovies, it's me, Matt, your compere. 
While the players are getting ready for their next scene, why don't you and I take a look at the programme? Special thanks first of all to Tib Winterfield for chucking a rose to our cast at the end of Vigil the Great Fire, which just concluded. Thank you very much, Tib. It's beautiful, and we appreciate your appreciation. Speaking of appreciation, exciting news. We are finalists in two categories at the Crit Awards. That's the Creator Recognition in Tabletop RPGs Awards. Thank you so much to everybody who voted in the nominations round for these awards. Thanks to you, we are down to the final four finalists in the Best Storyline in an Actual Play category and the Best Non-Player Character category for Ernest Baring, Agent of the Department of Omissions. This is super exciting because it means that even if we don't win, just for being down to those final four in those two categories, we are going to appear on a big screen and have, a, have the name of the show read out at Gen Con, one of the highlights of the gaming calendar over in the US later this year. The final voting is open until the 9th of July. There's a link in the program notes for this episode to go and cast your vote. And while you're looking down that list of finalists, I'm sure you're going to find loads of other exciting things to check out. I've already been going through it, finding new shows to try, games I wasn't aware of before, and designers I wasn't aware of that I need to go and check out. You might also notice some familiar faces. I said thanks to Tib Winterfield for throwing a rose at us right up the top of this interval. Tib is also nominated for Best Homebrew Spell for a spell that he published on his Law Masters newsletter, which provides items, non-player characters, monsters and spells for people running old school slash trad fantasy games. And you won't see her name on the list, but Fiona, who is on this very episode, part of this very production, playing Fenix of the Skeletal Duchy, Fiona is nominated also for Best Storyline, as part of the team for the Alien RPG stream by Girls Run These Worlds. We couldn't be sharing that finalist's podium with a worthier competitor, and I'm thrilled to see how it turns out. Now, I need to go call beginners for the next scene, so I'll leave you with a promo. This is for The Secret of St Kilda, written by Naomi Clark, who's on this very production, playing Kreoch of the Draga Earldom. Discover the secret of St. Kilda. Come smell the heather and sit by the fire. Come talk and laugh with a community of like-minded souls seeking salvation. Come walk the rugged cliffs listening to the screams of seabirds. Listen to the screams of something else far beneath. Out everywhere on the 28th of December. Follow us on at The Kilda to follow the drama as it unfolds and subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. Now, please return to your seats in the studio for the continuation of The Queen's Dead. Act One. As the court is brought into session... Lacrimine of the Wraithlight Dominion speaks up. Just enough of the head emerges <laughs> out of the barrel of tears to be visible and to speak. It is with great regret and sorrow that the Wraithlight Dominion accepts this court's nomination as this year's unhallowed sanctioner for this final potentially year of the court. 
I will endeavour to discharge the, this grave responsibility to the best of my considerable abilities. All you hear is a slow <laughs> clap. <laughs> like three claps and that's it. Sounds Alex. like a wood block. Yeah. <laughs> Kriok, I think, uh, gets up out of his throne and takes the floor. This is the kind of weakness that forebears the dawn. The idea that we shall all return to our graves from whence we came in but a year is offensive to me and to this court. Must we not focus on the matters of the day? Yet again, Logvik, the world eater, returns to eat the frame of my people. And yet this court does nothing but temple its hands and worry its tears. Well, if, if, you, if, you, would, if you would wait, Creo, uh, the pre presentation of your realm's woes and grievances uh, what was the first order of business, first item on the agenda today. There was an agenda. Did you not get the memo? It was circulated by frozen spiritual lament. You had only to break open the ice crystal and hear the song of the agenda. I asked for it as a written note, and all I got was this wet tissue. But I did make out what was meant to be said. Look, the agenda at every single session of court is the same. We've done, been doing this for 13 years. Right, so... I'm already at the first item, so we're like... <laughs> Yes, well, quite. Present, if you will, Creo, your woes and grievances. What are my woes us, and grievances? Tell us of your realm and what befalls it this this final year of the court. I don't like the use of the word final year, but it has been noted. There's a little. There's a clerk of the court. <laughs> <laughs> Which realm is the clerk of the court from? What sort of being are they? I think they're an ooze. <laughs> <laughs> like desperately. No. Are they trying to write? Are they trying to type? How are they recording? They're typing. I think they've got one of those like abbreviated uh, court typewriters. But it, it, the ooze is also inside the typewriter, so it's just sort of the keys oh, are inside. Oh. Oh. raises a hand to the ceiling to indicate to the intern to turn the spotlight on. Oh, bloop, bloop. And uh, he begins to pace slightly. My queen, this court, I come to you, Creoc, the rotting hand of the cataclysm, as but a servant of my people. The Draugr are a proud group. They're proud people. We have clawed our way out of the very earth to be here today. And yet, we are underappreciated in our time. You have stolen from us. Our resources move into scarcity and disappearance. There is not bone, no blood, no flesh, no silver. How are we to feed our people? How are we to contribute to this great dying breath? And yet we fight on. Logvik the World Eater hath returned. Logvik the World Eater is a creature made almost entirely of teeth. Ooh. Um, Don't like that. Yeah. Sort of like Otiug vibes, but entirely teeth. And our cavern, with which we would contribute to our rituals, is taken over by Logvik. How can I ask my people to fight on? I seek the floor. So, Naomi, this crisis that you've picked... Mm -hmm. This is a particularly Oof. nasty crisis. So now that you've announced your crisis, it's going to have an effect. 
Oh no! Immediately. Uh oh. So this is a damage, natural, and violent crisis. Oh, so no. immediately, please damage a bastion of your choice. <gasps> My mile high can of skulls and bone throne mm-hmm. <laughs> is damaged. I think the previous representative was probably eaten off it. <laughs> Logvik burst his way through the cavern and ate half of the throne and also its its various attendants. This is also a natural crisis, so either reduce stability by one, reduce a resource by one, mm-hmm. or damage a bastion. Okay, I am going to destroy my <gasps> throne. So oh, the only no. thing I have now is my blue flame pyre that exists in the head mm-hmm. of a large corpse. Logvik came back for another bite and finished the job. Yeah, I think that, I think that we uh we sent a load of people in to be like, Jesus, Logvik, go somewhere else. And he was like, <laughs> fuck you, and I'm gonna eat this entire throne. <laughs> nom nom so, nom. Just as the representative is explaining to the court that Logvik has eaten half the throne, uh, another minor functionary of the Draugr Earldom comes and whispers in his ear and tells him <laughs> that the actually the entire throne's gone now. <laughs> We've uh we've got a load of guys like there with with spears pointed at the entrance to the cavern, being like Jesus Christ, <laughs> and you can just hear Logvik the World Eater rumbling around in there as things are destroyed. And they're just like, Argh. I don't like him being in there, but I also don't want him to get out of there. <laughs> and because you appear to be a glutton for punishment, this is also a violent crisis. My so as the result of that, please either reduce stability by one. Uh, oh no, that's it. That's your only option. Reduce stability by one, please. Now that the floor has been finally ceded, do any other of our noble representatives have woes, grievances, or crises to present to the court? Fedex looks around. (laughs) (laughs) I guess that's me. Um, And gets up and slowly makes their way down to spotlight. Friends. Enemies. And those who have yet to decide. Oh, very good. I, well, I appreciate the years have been hard to all of us. But I come with grave news from our grey wastes of a duchy. The sky is falling. I know for some of you this will become a shock because, well, in our realm... The sky is the same colour as the ground, but we are quite aware that horizontally our space has been reduced. Much damage has happened to our bastion, Metatarsal. At this point, I like the idea we flash back to Metatarsal where someone is desperately trying to lift up the other hand. So it looks like the instead of the Egyptian dance move it was doing, uh, it's now a skeleton holding up Atlas. the sky. <laughs> yeah, Atlas. <laughs> Absolutely. Des- they're desperately trying to hoist it up or something. So, naturally, we are quite concerned because, you know, if the sky falls, well, where else can we go but down back to our own? Graves. And should this part of the sky fall down on ourselves, well, we would hate to consider what would happen to the other realms. So we ask for your assistance, dear colleagues and associates and friends. And slowly walks back up to their throne. Yeah, what you missed, uh, dear listeners, <laughs> in that was um, the, the sickening smile that Fiona gave us as she said friends it was uh truly terrifying and made me think nah, i don't want to be friends with fiona anymore i'm just like portraying skeleton skulls which always smile <laughs> they're always smiling and grinning right <laughs> okay i feel unsafe and and we'll then take a moment to go uh, and then gently hover over their throne of bones <laughs> <laughs> So, Fiona, you've chosen the crisis, Comes the Falling of the Sky. I have, yes. Which is a damage and natural crisis. Yes, correct. So, uh, now that the crisis has befallen your realm, Mm -hmm. uh, for the damage effect, damage a bastion of your choice by one. Yep, that will be metatarsal. And for the natural effect, 
Mm-hmm. either reduce stability by one or instead you can choose to either reduce a resource by one or damage a bastion i think i will reduce my stability because that makes more sense i think because uh, the sky is literally falling <laughs> um so yeah so that goes down to three with all their colleagues crises presented long fingered white hands appear on the edge of the barrel as Lacrimine slithers out of the Barrel of Tears to take the floor. <laughs> <laughs> An intern with a mop is like... <laughs> yeah, right behind. <laughs> well, the nice thing about the, the new chasms is we've got natural drainage here in the court chamber. Mm, yeah, now. yeah. So true, so true. Drags themselves to the centre of the court chamber with a sound like nails on obsidian, takes the floor... The Wraith Knight Dominion laments to present a crisis befalling our realm also. A terrible crisis of a magical nature that threatens the deep law that our realm is beholden to hold on behalf of the Queen and all of death. The arcane spike which we drove into the parallel realms has splintered and begun feeding back into our realm, shattering our beautiful ice, draining our beautiful songs from our realm. I think that uh, we... <laughs> skeleton and Draugr, representative Sherry look like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, we go. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, no. What a shame. <laughs> Listen, we've, we told you that you shouldn't have drilled into the arcane well in the first place. You know? <laughs> we said this in year one. We said this in year two. And now look where we are. We just we didn't expect this kind of uh, like attack on progress from yes. uh, our you know from t- such innovators as the skeletal duchy. Honestly, we expect it of the Draugr, but mm-hmm. this is the crisis: a broken siphon, an arcane and draining si- uh, crisis. I have the choice for arcane of either reducing my magic by one, or damaging or destroying a bastion instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to choose to reduce my magic by one from five to four and for the draining effect it's going to reduce a resource of my choice by one i don't have none of us have a lot of resources i don't have any of the resources we need for the ritual Oh yeah me neither by the way (laughs) (laughs) we're gonna do great yeah i'm sure it's fine looks like i'm in a position of power uh i mean i have to be true to uh what i said in the speech so i'm going to reduce my ice Mm. from prevalence to scarcity this uh draining siphon has been melting the beautiful ice of the wraith light dominion it's a shit it's weird that you're like no fucking water and it's like mm, is that not what tears are like almost mm. entirely <laughs> i sort of i look over to you to you and i go don't don't it's not <laughs> It's not worth. It's not <laughs> worth We've the had the same argument for years. Yes, I sort of, I, yeah, I do the emotion with the hand, but like, don't do it. It's like sort of cut <laughs> across the throat. Like, mm, 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 mm. Next on the agenda of this waxing court, statements of intent. Please may all representatives of the realms of death state what they intend to do this session to resolve their crises or contribute to the ritual prophesied by our great Lich Queen to hold off the coming of the terrible dawn. Who desires the floor? If no one will take it, then the unhallowed sanctioner must, by decree and tradition, go first. Let's just get it over with. Mm. Since I already have the floor, it does seem to make the most sense. The Wraith Light Dominion commits this waxing court to once again pierce the barriers and the veils between worlds, to drive a spike into the land of death 
between the death and the living and to sap the What power. if we set the dragon spikes into places? That's what got you here in the... I have the floor, representative of the Draugr out there. <laughs> we will sap the very power of the god of death himself in order to enact the ritual against the coming of the dawn. We believe that no arcane ritual should be taboo when it comes to ending this terror of the dawn. We see the floor. The Draugr Eldam um, Kriok ambles down and uh, he points at you with a slothing, rotted digit. Ugh. While Lacrimine is trying to climb back into the barrel <laughs> and constantly slipping down. <laughs> no, no upper body strength. No. <laughs> I feel like I feel like she should go in like backwards, like feet first. Yeah. Into the- <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like bending backwards, walking uh-huh, on the uh-huh. ceiling. Oh. Have you forgotten our seventh year? How do you expect? To save us, stop the dawn, and continue our way of life. If you are stealing resources directly from death itself. I turn to the Lich Queen. Beautiful, wondrous deity. Before you I lay barely a man. Barely a monster. But we at the Draugr Elder, we will give our iron, our flesh, and, dare I say, our love to hold back the oncoming dawn. We commit 10,000 Draugr to engage in ritual combat, should it please you for many, many We will create this offering as broken bodies pile high upon the altar. For you, for the dawn, and for these gratitudeless, graceless fiends. And I seed the floor. Bitch. This has been The Queen's Dead, a studio production from Merely Role Players, starring Fiona Howard as the Skeletal Duchy, Naomi Clark as the Draugr Earldom, and Matt Boothman as the Wraithlight Dominion. The theme music is by Matt Boothman, who also edited and produced this episode. We were playing the beta version of Court of the Lich Queen by Ursidice, who you can find at ursadice.com Merely Roleplayers is a Foggy Outline production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Until next time, if drama be the food of life, play on.
Mic drop. <laughs> Just drop a bone. Yeah. Distasteful. I shouldn't have done that voice so soon after having a cold. I, was say, yeah. <laughs> I believe that we will need iron. Um but I want to have an argument about what a subtle grave entails and whether that's where <laughs> blood bone or earth is allowed and, um, you know, who who is creating derivative ideas mm. and who's really understanding the true meaning of the prophecy. 